going on, Luke here, and just like everyone else, I do love a good tier list. Now, I actually did a video with Big KR Sports, and I went through and I ranked my fullbacks. Now, I thought I'd go through and do a redo of that, but just myself, not be swayed by anything, just come up with my own one. Now, if you want to see a more in-depth video, definitely go check out the Big KR Sport video. In fact, the tier list that we're using is the one that he made, so definitely go and check it out. Link is in the description below. But just for this video, we're just going to make a more, I don't know, like a streamlined version of it. And who knows, I might even have changed my mind on some of the players. After all, I've seen some of the trials, I've had more time to think about things, and I'm not really listening to anything else. I'm just coming up with my own opinion, so maybe I'm going to make some different choices. Anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into this tier list. Alrighty, here is the tier makeup. Like I said, this one was made by BKR Sports. Use them in the video. Like I said, go and check out the more in-depth one. This is just going to be a quick streamline one. So... Uh, this first player, Blake Taff, I think it's a pretty easy one. I think he's unproven, despite him having a really, really good season last year. I say season, it was just a good back end of the season. Obviously, I only really played the final series uh, once I saw Mitchell went down. Did come into the fullback spot. I think he held his own. However, the Rabbitohs fullback seemed to do that. Uh, apart from Latron Mitchell, we're seeing Corey Allen do a job there. We've also seen Blake Tuff do a job there. Even Alex Johnson, when he's played, hasn't looked too bad uh, as of late. So maybe it's just a case of the rest of the side is very, very strong and Blake Tuff can get carried. And that's why I've got to chuck him in on proving because he hasn't really played many games. In fact, I think he's only played a handful of games. I don't even know where he's going to play this year. Moving on to the next player, Chans. Chans is a... Uh, he's a hard one because I feel like... Based off the trials, based on everything we've seen, I think Xavier Savage might be getting the fullback role. He's been starting over him in the trials, and Xavier Savage looks really good. So with that in mind, and especially if Chance hasn't really played much as of late, I'd say back a couple of years ago, would have easily chucked him into the quality section, but now I'm going to have to chuck him in and do the job based off the trials. Xavier Savage has got his number, I think. I think we see Chance in the centers possibly, but just in terms of the fullback role, I think he's just a do-the-job fullback at the moment. Now on to Clinton Gutherson. I feel like I chucked him in quality uh, in the video. And that's exactly where I'm going to chuck him here. And now I think Gutho, I do think he is quality. I don't think he's elite. I know a lot of para fans. Actually, maybe not even a lot of para fans. But a lot of people in general seem to think Gutherson is this like elite fullback. But he's never really done anything in terms of um, you know getting close to a premiership. Even when he played Origin, he played in the centers. And he got shown up big time by a second rower. Uh, he hasn't really got elite speed. He, his ball playing is quite good, I will say that, and he's backing up. But just in terms of speed and power and all that sort of stuff, he doesn't have that. You look at guys like Draboyevic and Latrell Mitchell, they can just bully players. You don't really see Gutherson do that. He's all about high energy. So I, I do rate Gutherson, but I can only put him in the quality section, uh, which is not a bad place to be. But just in terms of some of these other fullbacks, it'll make sense why he's there. Dane Laurie, I'm going to chuck him in the... Do I chuck him in do the job unproven? I'm going to chuck him in and do the job. Just under Chance. I feel like Chance is still a better fullback, despite Savage being ahead of him. Uh, Dane Laurie, we saw him have a really good half a season. He ended the season injured, though, so I suppose he is unproven in a sense, but what we did see from him was really, really good. When he was at Penrith, he was stuck behind Dylan Edwards, went to the Tigers, and I think he really got a chance to shine in a pretty shitty Tiger side, let's be honest. They, we've seen other guys like M. Uh, we've seen Dewey, we've seen a fair few guys have a go at that fullback role, and Dane Laurie is the only one who's really cemented a spot there. Now moving on to Dallin with Tennis Lesniak straight away, straight in that not that great. If there was another category below that, um, like a shit category, I will put Dallin right there. As a fullback, no ball playing. He runs hard, but he hasn't got elite speed. Um, he runs hard, hands for feet. Um, as a winger, you can sort of get away with it. Um, under the bomb, he's okay. I mean, under the bomb, like as a fullback, couldn't catch a cold. That's what it felt like as a Bulldog supporter. The very first season he got there, he came and he played really well. He's running hard. And I was like, well, here we go. Dallin's finally going to fulfill his potential as a fullback. But didn't really progress from there. He definitely regressed. And he ends up in the not that great category. For the wing, maybe a little bit different. But yeah, fullback, not that great. Uh, Dylan Edwards, I think he's at the top of do the job. Obviously, just won a premiership. I don't think I can have him under Charns or under Dane Laurie. I don't really rate... It's like similar to Gutho. I look at him and I'm like, doesn't have elite speed. Ball playing's okay. Like, a lot of qualities about him. Like, he's not really elite. Or even in the dude, the job, he's kind of just... Eh, he's kind of a meh. Like, speed-wise, ball playing. But yeah, he still plays really well for Penrith. And they've had guys like Charlie Staines. And even Stephen Crichton's played a little bit there. But they look super comfortable when Dylan Edwards is at fullback. So, he's going to be doing something. Maybe we just don't see it. And to be honest, they just won a premiership. And Dylan Edwards was there. And he was playing injured. I still thought he played pretty well. I know he had that miss on Cody Walker. It was a good step on Cody Walker. Great try. But, look, Dylan Edwards, I thought he was quite solid. I feel like do the job is more those solid players. Um, so, look... I think Dylan Edwards fits that one. Then we've got the Hammer here, I believe. The Hammer, 
I'm going to chuck in Unproven. Uh, based off the trials, I thought he looked quite good. I'm going to put him above Taff for sure, but we've mainly seen him in the centers and on the wing. For the centers of Queensland, it looked unreal. He's got the speed. He definitely has all the attributes to be a gun fullback. Whether he ends up turning into a gun fullback, I don't know, but I could easily see him being in the quality section in a couple of seasons. Uh, Valentine Holmes, he's had his chance, hasn't taken it at all. He's on big money. He's moved to the centers. Hammer's basically done a swap with him, and I think Hammer's going to look a lot better than Valentine Holmes. So, Hammer, despite being an unproven, I think he can be a quality, at least at the top of do the job. I think he can be a good fullback. Speaking of good fullbacks, we have one of the best in elite, James Tedesco. Easily the best fullback if you go off like the last five years or so. I mean, obviously, Trebojevic last year was unreal, but Tedesco before that was easily the best player, let alone the best fullback. I know we've got a lot of good fullbacks in the game, and this is the most stack position, as you can tell by my Rugby League Live 4 videos. Um, but look, Tedesco, he's right at the top. I'll take Trebojevic right now. Let's just do Trebojevic. Trebojevic is going to be ahead of him. Um, so Trebojevic and Tedesco, they are definitely elite. As for the rest of them, I don't know if I put anyone else in the elite category. I'm a little bit torn. But Chaboyevich, number one. Tedesco, number two. However, longevity-wise, Tedesco, easy number one. So that was pretty easy. We've got Turbo out of the way. We've got Tedesco. I should just talk about Turbo saying I'm putting him in at number one. Like I said, easily the best fullback right now. Um, I think he's capable of winning a second Dalliem in a row. If Manly play half season, Chaboyevich is going to be right up there as long as he doesn't get injured. It's always going to be question marks over Chaboyevich with his injuries, but... Look, last year was pretty good. I mean, I can't really fault him. I know he had a couple injuries here and there, but in terms of long-term injuries, he was all right. And he's obviously secured the Dalian in his first full season. So I'm keen to see what he can do in really his second full season in first grade, at least as a fullback. So hopefully he can do a job this year. Uh, maybe it's not going to be so good for the rest of the league. But Chaboyevich, when he's absolutely flying, he's so good to watch. He's one of my favorite players to watch. People ask me who are my favorite players. Chaboyevich is definitely up there. Despite him playing for Manly, that's just how good of a player he is and a good dude off the field as well. Now moving on to a guy who I would chuck in the unproven, Jaden Campbell. I'm going to chuck him above all these other guys. I think he is unproven. However, I could easily see Jaden Campbell moving up into the do-the-job slash quality. Kind of similar to the Hammer, although way different players. But just in terms of they've got the potential there. We've seen they've got the attributes. It's just a matter of them producing on the field. Now, Jaden Campbell's definitely produced it on the field. He seemed to pop up in the right spots. But it's just a matter of... Is he going to get second year syndrome? We don't know. So for that reason, I'm going to chuck him in unproven. But the fact that he's moved AJ Brimson from a starting fullback role into the halves. And I don't even think that was even talked about or on the cards before Jaden Campbell came along. Basically, Brimson was your locked in fullback for 10 years. That's what the Titans fans were thinking. That's what NRL fans in general were thinking. We saw Brimson kill for Queensland at fullback. Now Jaden Campbell comes along and all of a sudden Brimson's playing in the halves. That's just how good Jaden Campbell was when he came into first grade. Obviously, got the link to his dad, the legend, Preston Campbell, especially a legend of the Titans, uh, one Dalliam. Can Jaden Campbell win a Dalliam himself? Maybe? Who knows? But at the moment, he's definitely unproven in the NRL. A B, he's had some really, really good games. Now, speaking about a guy who is quite proven in the NRL, but it is very, very controversial. I can't even remember where I had him in my video with BKR, but I'm actually going to chuck him in quality. I'm going to chuck him... Chuck him above or... I don't know. Gutho is a hard one, because I feel like KP has got a better game, but he plays for a worse side. I'm personally going to put him ahead of Gutherson. I think KP's got better attributes. I think he's got the speed there. He's got a good passing game. Um, you know, his kick's okay. Um, defense is pretty good. He's got all the attributes. He just plays for the Knights. Um, you chuck him in any half-decent side. You chuck him in that ill side, and I think we'll be speaking a lot differently about Kalen Ponga. Um, he's the Queensland fullback when he's fit. Um, Gutherson is a guy who's sort of... Third or fourth, maybe even fifth string for New South Wales. Um, so I can't really have Gutherson ahead of Kalen Ponga. I thought he plays for a much better club. I'm going to go Kalen Ponga ahead of him, but I could swap him depending on, I don't know, the day. Maybe if I did it tomorrow, I would I'd swap him around. But Kalen Ponga, like I said, very, very good player. I feel like at this point, he's so, I don't know, he was so overrated that he's now kind of underrated, I guess. Um, people just look at him and they're like, oh yeah, he's got a step and that's about it. But definitely not the case. When he plays, Knights have a pretty good record. When he doesn't play, Knights don't have a very good record. I think it says a lot about Kalen Ponga. So I'll chuck him in there. Uh, looking at the next player, it's going to be Latrell Mitchell. Where do we chuck him? Do we put him in elite? Who else have we got there? I don't know if there's anyone else I'd really put in elite. So, look, you know what? Let's do it. Latrell Mitchell, elite. Latrell Mitchell, definitely behind Tedesco and Trebojevic. And this is where it makes it quite hard because... You know what? Let's drop him down. Let's drop him down. He's suspended way too often. He's just come out and done interviews saying he's not going to change his game. The game's gone soft, yada, yada, yada. 
Dumb attitude. He's got a dumb attitude towards footy, in my opinion. Um, I really like Lachelle. He's super entertaining to watch. Cops a lot of shit, but at the same time, when you come out and say things like that, I don't know, it doesn't justify it, but it definitely doesn't help him, because at the moment, a lot of people think he's a bit of a thug, and he comes out, and he breaks Johnny Money's jaw, and he's done a lot of other things as well, so I can definitely see where he's got the reputation, but in terms of just him as a pure footballer, he would be elite, if he just cuts the shit out of his game, he's an elite player, um, in terms of injuries, doesn't get injured that often, I would say, like he does, but no super long-term injuries, not like Jaboyevic, where Jaboyevic is missing whole seasons, and Tedesco at the start of his career, missing whole seasons, um, Latrell easily can be in the elite section, um, it's just a matter of, when he's on the field, definitely elite, just needs to stay on the field, and for that reason, I just can't have him in the elite, despite him being an elite player, I don't know if that makes sense, so I'm going to chuck Latrell right at the top of quality, no one is going ahead of him, not even Ryan Poppenhausen, I'm going to chuck him there, Ryan Poppenhausen, a little puppy, um, moves into that spot there. Um, look, I love Ryan Poppenhausen, fantastic player, but I think he does benefit from playing in a Melbourne Storm system, as a lot of the Melbourne Storm players do. Uh, he's got Cameron Munster around him, Jerome Hughes, Brandon Smith, Harry Grant, a, a gun forward pack, a gun back one. He's got a lot of good players to work with, uh, but Poppenhausen definitely earned his stripes at the Storm. Didn't come easy for them. Wasn't the first choice player. Came in, absolutely killed it off the bench. Got into the starting side, uh, won a Clive Churchill. Probably was going to play for New South Wales, but got an injury. I really rate Ryan Poppenhausen. Um, I do think he is, at the moment, a better player than Kalen Ponga. Like I said, Kalen Ponga, it's so hard to get a read on because if we chucked him into a Melbourne side, we'd be probably chucking him in the elite category. But um, at the moment, he plays for the Knights. That's all we can go off. So Poppenhausen, yes, I think he is not quite as good as Latrell. Latrell is just an enigma, man. He's so... He's so hard to judge. It's like Inglis. When they're on, unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. But they've got to be on. And they've got to be on the field. So, Pop Nelson, I think if a team plays well, his main attribute is he's a good support player. Just gets in there, does all those shit runs, just pops up in the right spots. I feel like if you shut down Melbourne, Poppenhausen can't really do too much. He benefits from Melbourne getting on the front foot and, and doing some good things. And he's the beneficiary of it. Um, but yeah, very, very good play, Ryan Poppenhausen. Goal kick as well, which helps. A lot of these guys are goal kickers, actually. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if they actually are. Um, but speaking of a guy who definitely isn't a goal kicker, go with Matt Dufty. Now, I, I had him easy in the not that great category when I did the Big Hour Sport one. I know for sure I had him in there. Watch him for the Bulldogs. And seeing this is the attack, when Dufty gets the ball, you just get that excitement about it. Uh, I don't know. When I was watching them for the Dragons, I knew we could do it, but I wasn't really paying attention to just him. But, yeah, with the Bulldog side, that lacks a lot of attack in the trials. When Dufty gets the ball, even the, the intercept try, you just know something could possibly happen. In saying that, though, defense, absolutely shocking. I said it in the BKR video. I don't. I haven't changed my mind at all. Had a sort of an argument in the BKR sport uh, comment section the guy talking about Duff, and he was saying his defense wasn't that bad, and it, it's better than Ponga and all that sort of stuff. A lot of shit. It definitely is not. I, I saw him miss one-on-ones um, multiple times in this past game. And yes, your last line of defense, they have to get through everyone else, but uh, Duffy's defense is, is not quite up there. Everything else, though, is really good, but he's just he's not better than the other guys. I'd take Dane Laurie over him. I'd take Chance over him. I'd take Dylan Edwards over him. I wouldn't take Dallin over him, though. So, Matt Duffy, I'm, I'm happy with him being in that not-that-great category. Next guy, Reese Walsh. Where in the hell do you put Reese Walsh? I don't know. I really don't know. At the moment, I think I chucked him maybe in uh, quality last time. Has the potential to be an elite. Could be a quality player. Could also be a do-the-job player. Got in a bit of trouble off the field. Uh, look, plays in a warrior side, which is a bit hot and cold. And I will say last year when he played, he was a little bit hot and cold. But the potential is definitely there. But at the moment, I have him right at the top of do-the-job. Um, I saw too many drop balls, too many errors to have him in quality, especially with these guys who have been doing it for years. Can't have that for Reese Walsh. Um, even in terms of unproven, you could chuck him in there. But um, yeah, at the moment, Reese Walsh, top of do the job. Selwyn Cobbo, I think it's Selwyn Cobbo. Going to chuck him in the unproven. Same with uh, Tessie New, Tyrell Sloan. Those three guys. Tyrell Sloan, I think, is going to be an absolute gun this year. Selwyn Cobbo, if he gets a chance this year at fullback, I think just a chance in general. Going to be an absolute gun. I expect him to get a chance. Um, I think it's Tessie New. I think he'll he'll do a job as well. Um, I think he'll get first crack, but yeah, Selwyn Cobbo, I think, will be the fullback by the end of the year for sure for the Broncos. I think easy. Um, looks really, really good. Looks the goods. Tyrell Sloan. Let's chuck him. Uh, let's chuck Tyrell Sloan in the number two. I think he looks really, really good. Then we'll go, I don't know. Let's go like that. It uh, doesn't really matter too much in terms of ranking the unprovens, but let's just do that. And then Will Kennedy is the last one. I'm going to chuck Will Kennedy just behind Reese Walsh. 
um, in terms of do the job. I see Reese Walsh has those elite qualities. He just isn't experienced enough and hasn't been around long enough for me to chuck him in there or the quality section. Will Kennedy has been around for a couple of seasons now, player of the year for the Sharks. Um, look, he is a very, very good player. Can I chuck him in the quality? No, I can't. So I think he's better than some of these other guys, but I, I just can't put him in the quality. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty spot on. Um, going in split, I think it's probably pretty similar to them at BKR Sports videos. Probably pretty similar to a lot of people. Trebojevich and Tedesco in the elite. We have Latrell, Puppy, KP, Gutherson in the quality. And do the job, we have Reese Walsh, Kennedy, Edwards, Nicole Clodstad, and Dane Laurie. And not that great, we have Dufty and DWZ. And I'm proving we have Campbell, Sloan, The Hammer, Tessie New, Blake Taff, and Selwyn Cobbo. So, look, I think that's pretty fitting. Guys, let me know in the comment section below. Do you agree with this? Do you disagree? I feel like there's going to be a few people who agree, a few people who disagree, um, especially guys like Matt Dufty, um, even guys like Gutherson, Reese Walsh, all those sort of guys. I think they are going to be quite controversial. Latrell being in quality instead of Lee, I think might be controversial. Let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts of this tier list? Anyways, that's how I'm going to wrap up this one. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you do around here. Or to make sure to use the notification bell. Don't mind the sub boxes. Use the notification bell and never miss any of my videos. Also, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Miss Luke and YT for the most part. My Facebook's Miss Luke, but everything else including Snapchat, including TikTok is Miss Luke and YT. Give me a follow, give me an ad. And stay tuned for more content on the channel. I've got Rubber League Live 4 content. Maybe having some Rubber League Live 5 content in terms of talking about it. Also got NRL content, as you can tell by this video. Might do some more tier lists. I don't really know. But stay tuned for more content on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. See you.